Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming and more Democracy 3 Africa, playing as Zambia going into year 6. Which means, yes, last time we did get re-elected, and if you missed it you should go check it out because it was a real nail-biter. We won by about 3% of the vote. Not much. Not my best performance at all. Um, but, we won, and really that's the only thing that matters in Democracy 3, or just not even a game, in Democracy in general. Win the majority vote and win. That, that, that's it. it d win or take all. So here we are. Now, by the end of my second term, I suspect uh, that the, all of Zambia will love me and would probably be open to me taking on a third term and breaking the constitution, but me being a good democratic leader, I would not dream of such a thing. All right. In year six, residential credit facilities. Ah, my, my tongue. It's getting trapped in my teeth. Okay, residential credit facilities. That's what I'm trying to say. We now have credit cards in Zambia, which basically means that our economy is stable enough and Crime is not really as much of a thing, so people feel like, hey, we can afford to lend money, and we won't get horribly screwed in the process. So now we have modern technology through credit cards coming into Zambia. And uh, this pretty much will work the same way, I think, as the uh, stock exchange. As time goes on, as it gets stronger and more settled, we'll see the GDP start going up a little bit because people will spend. And the more you spend, of course, the more you grow the economy. Um, although I do also believe that with credit facilities, poverty also will go up slightly at least. Because uh, typically what happens with credit cards is you'll have some people who spend money they don't have. And they might get themselves trapped in this terrible sticky pit of debt. And they don't find their way out of it for years because they have bad spending practices. I don't know. Personally, I don't like credit cards and I don't use them. I, I'm not saying I would ever ban them. But personally, I don't use them. I, I, I don't really see the point of spending money that I have and taking on debt. I, I just, I just doesn't, it doesn't compute to me. Why would I put myself in debt when I could just instead wait a week, get a paycheck, and go buy it myself and not take the risk with the interest and so on? If you can stay really disciplined and stay on top of it and pay it off every month, hey, no big deal, I suppose. But statistically speaking, credit cards make their money on people who aren't disciplined, and sooner or later you're statistically going to slip. So, I don't know. I, I don't really see the point personally, but you know, that's just me. I don't like debt. I'm, like, really against debt, personally. I hate taking on debt. So, anyway. Power block switch. This is the policy we are presented with today. Our historic alignment with one of the largest world powers is in question. Their influence in global politics has waned with their economy, and we have now been approached by their bitter rivals who are seeking an alliance. A new alliance would bring monetary and political support with it, but this may also be a good opportunity to sever our ties and go our own way. So no matter what, we're not sticking with our old buddy. I don't know if this is supposed to be making a statement about any particular world powers. I mean, maybe America. I feel like we have been diminishing a bit in the few last few years. But, uh, you know, maybe if this was a game like 10, 20 years ago, it would be Russia. I don't know. But let's not think about that too much. Let's instead deal with the question of whether or not we want to join a power block or whether or not we want to become non-aligned. So... Two options here. By aligning ourselves with a rising world power, we will benefit from increased trade with them. And also, as they rise on the global stage, we will rise along with them. Kind of like America and the rise of the United States and such. You, uh, the, the, more, the more of a friend you are to the United States, the better you tend to do in the world stage. Or at least that's how we'd like to think it works. Certainly during the Cold War period, because we tried looking out for our own. But, uh... You're kind of tied to them, and, you know, you're, if, if they go down or they make some mistakes, you might get kind of lumped in with them, and that can have some, uh, some adverse effects, let's say that. So it's good to have allies, but you're kind of tied to them. On the other hand, we could take basically the Switzerland approach. Express the confidence that we have in our own national identity and our unwillingness to become involved in others' domestic affairs. By leaving our historic power block to join the non-aligned movement, we declare to the international community that we wish to peacefully coexist. So this almost reeks of more of a, an isolationist approach, which is something that the libertarians of the United States would be thrilled by. Well, even a lot of conservatives these days. I don't know. The, war, the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq have left a, a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth in, um, in the United States about interventionalism. Actually, okay, not just Afghanistan and Iraq. How about Libya... You know, how about our effects with Syria and so on? These things, yeah, we're, it's, it's becoming increasingly unpopular in the United States. This said, I actually think will be the best option for us. So if we do this, I'm pretty sure that patriots will be happy because we are, again, expressing confidence in our own national identity. Patriots love that. Uh, I think that liberals will ultimately be kind of happy because, you know, we're not taking a strong arm approach. 
I think the only people that will get upset by this are the uh, conservatives, ultimately. So this is probably the best choice for us. As far as real life, I don't know. I'm, I'm leaning more and more toward this. I used to be a bit more of an interventionalist when I was a kid, um, a lot younger. And as time has gone on and I've gotten older and I matured a bit more, I don't know. There's a time and a place for intervention, I think. I'm not I'm not ruling it out entirely. I'm not an isolationist, but it's it, there's a wisdom to knowing when to get involved and when not to. And then there's the moral question of, well, why are we getting involved in someone else's affairs? Are we doing it for humanitarian reasons and we have the, the world behind us on this one? Or are we doing it to take over resources and set up a puppet dictator and so on? I don't know. It's It's complicated. It's always sticky. It's never really fair to the civilians of the country that are being interfered with. I don't know. It's a rough one. But for the purposes of the game, I think that joining a non-aligned movement is perfectly fine. What do you guys think? Isolationism? Good idea? Bad idea? I don't know. We haven't even gotten onto the first turn yet, so I should probably do that. But I think that brings up a good uh, political question. And you really have, uh, I think, people from both sides of the aisle with differing opinions on that one. I've known quite a few very interventionalist uh, Democrats... Whereas it used to be the Republicans who were seen as very interventionalist, and it's it kind of flip-flops back and forth depending on who's in power. So it's interesting to hear the different opinions on that one. We now have 63% of the vote, which is interesting because we didn't have 63% of the vote when we actually went to the election. But now that we've won, people want to say, oh yeah, we were totally on the super serial party. Oh yeah, yeah, we were on the winning team. Liars. All right, what are we going to do? All right, so now we're starting off with year six, and I'm not worried about getting reelected. What I'm going to do is try to make some long-term changes that will, one, affect membership, and also, two, improve the economy while also dealing with the environment, because right now it's pretty bad. We have the asthma epidemic, we have pollution, but most importantly, we also have the water shortage, and those things are only going to get worse as the economy grows. By the way, malaria is still going down, but it's taking for freaking ever. I'm not sure we're going to be able to get rid of malaria by the end of this. We might try. We'll see. But I only have 19 political capital, and that's still kind of hindering me. So, let's worry about the environment first. That's usually pretty cheap and easy to do. For example, nature conservation is a pretty darn popular one. A national program for the ethical nat natural resource use allocation and protection. I'm pretty sure this is going to upset uh, capitalists a lot. Yeah, it does. A lot. But, look at this. The environment goes up by 30% at maximum. That's wildly powerful. 30 freaking percent? Like, holy crap, this will counteract a lot of the damage done by the economy as we uh, become more and more industrialized. So capitalists, they're going to become happy as I make more economic policies. This will offset some of the happiness, but at the same time, it also offsets some of the damage we are doing. So I think that it's going to be very good for us in the long run. Hopefully in the short one as well. I don't think it's going to hurt us too much. Uh, as far as um, anything else, we could do the Keep the Country Tidy campaign. Very cheap, very, very cheap. And it has a pretty similar effect in that it just gives you an extra 4% to the environment. For only 20 million Quacha, though, compared to the 400 million we did for 30% earlier, this is still a pretty dang good value. Never underestimate the power of a mere campaign in this game. I know its uh, difference seems rather small, but it doesn't cost much political capital, very easy to implement, and it doesn't cost a lot of money either. Persuading people to join in on something is just, you know, it's a pretty effective way of doing things. Pretty small gains, and it's not going to hurt anybody, really. It's designed to make people feel guilty about littering. Oh, yeah, that's right. Play on their conscience. Perfect. All right, we don't have much political capital left, so let's move on. Now, the question is, as we are making liberals, patriots, and capitalists, and so on happier, are we going to be seeing a lot more political capital? And that's what I'd like to see. Hey, we got a Nobel Peace Prize. I'm just like Barack Obama. These have been seen as, those seen as instrumental in transitioning the country to a stable democracy have been awarded. Obviously me, me and only me, I am the one who transferred everything over to democracy. Give me that trophy, I want it. All right, we still got 2.3 billion surplus, we're at 69% of the vote, it is still going up. And wow, yeah, okay, we have 26 political capital now, so we are definitely improving. Oh yeah, look at this, okay, he's no longer down at one. He's going up. They're both going up. Okay. Much, much better. So I think as the game progresses at this point, uh, now our cabinet is going to start coming into full swing, and we are going to be able to pass almost anything we want pretty quickly. Now that said, a few more things I could do. One, I would like to get some more technology. Uh, I'd like to reduce religious membership. I'd like to make patriots happy so I can ensure that I'm getting more political capital. And a good way to do all three of those things and spend some of our surplus is a space program. Where are you? There you are. 
Yes, the Zambian space program. You never saw it coming. We will explore space. As well as for purely scientific benefits, a well-funded space program will boost the level of technological expertise throughout the entire country. Perfect. It's going to cost us a bit of money. We're going to go for a space station of our own. It's going to cost us 900 million kwacha to do this. But Patriots will be thrilled and their membership goes up. And since Patriots already love me, why not? This is just going to secure the vote for me even more. Unemployment, yes, it goes down. It's already non-existent, but hey, why not? State employees love it. Technology goes up by 12% very rapidly, which is great. And it reduces the technology backwater, which, you know, both of these combined is going to be pretty good for us. But also... Religious membership goes down by 8%. Because once people get off the earth, we're like, wow, we can do anything. I guess we don't need a god or something like that. I don't know. I, I don't pretend to understand the rationale. But that's what it is. If, if we go to space, then people will abandon god. That That's the message I'm getting out of this. We're also seeing as a strong leader, which I don't think will really affect us too much since we're getting rid of the conservatives. But hey, why not? It's not so bad. Unfortunately, I'm already out of political capital because that was pretty expensive. So let's move on. This may actually be a pretty short video. I'm not too sure yet. Although I did ramble a lot for the first, like, five minutes, so who knows. Hey, we got a technological advantage! That's exactly what I was hoping for. Beautiful. Technology backwater, though. Wait, okay, by having a technology backwater... What? Okay, we still have the technology backwater. It's not gone, but by having a technological advantage, it will eliminate it next turn guaranteed. So, okay. For, for a brief couple of weeks, we are both completely illiterate with technology and also freaking geniuses. Like, we're talking Asian nations, like Japan kind of geniuses. Like, no, I, that may be a little bit racist, but whatever. Foreign visit schedule. It is time to set the schedule for our diplomatic foreign visits. Do we visit a historic ally who we probably just broke ties with when we switched that power block? Or do we build a new relationship? I'm going to build some new relationships. Zambia needs new friends. This is the way of the future. Despite spending a lot of money on a space program, we still have 2 billion kwacha in surplus, which is pretty good. Uh, 26 political capital for us, huh? Um, you know what? I want to try changing creationism versus evolution. Unfortunately, I can't raise it up to evolution only right now. Uh, we need 30 political capital for that, huh? Alright, well, we're generating, what, 24 per turn? So, let's just not spend it all, and we'll be okay. Um... You know something I could do? And I always I always want to try using this, but I very rarely get to play a game where I do. Let's go for the healthcare vouchers. You remember how we did the school vouchers earlier and it seems to have worked out really well for our education system? Let's do the same thing with this. We are going to be designing a healthcare system where yes, the state has to issue out money just like you would in socialized healthcare, but instead it basically says, here's some money to, specifically for your healthcare. You go out, find a plan you like, and let the free market compete for your business. That's what it does. It's basically, it's still the state spending money, but theoretically it's more efficient, and it also promotes free market competition and innovation rather than a bureaucratic, bloated state healthcare system. At least that's the idea behind it. I actually don't know. Are there any countries in the world that have really set this into practice that has been effective? I'm not too sure. I know in Europe it's primarily uh, state-run healthcare services. At least I think it is. The United States is certainly no such thing. We have tax credits now with Obamacare, but also mandatory insurance, which has not gone over very well, especially if you watch uh, the reports right now. What do they predict? Obamacare premium costs are going to go up by like 22% next year? It's pretty ridiculous. It's skyrocketing right now. It's really going wrong, in my opinion anyway. But yeah, I don't know of any countries that actually have done proper healthcare voucher systems. But this is an idea that was floated in the uh, Republican primary um, earlier this year, you know, before Donald Trump won the nomination. And I was actually really interested in this idea, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, if ever. I don't know. I'd be interested to see if there are any means-tested um, examples where it has worked. But we're going to max this out. Now, one of the reasons I really want to go for this in this game is because, once again, it reduces socialism membership a lot. Kind of like the school vouchers did. Basically the exact same thing. We're also going to be focusing a lot more on private health care, which means the health of the country is going to be going up, but I won't have to be spending the money on it. Also, poor earnings and middle earnings go up, which is also great. And equality. Like, why not? Who doesn't like this? Yes, it's expensive. It's going to cost me $2.9 billion. Okay, fair enough. And actually, it's more expensive than what I'm spending on state health care. That's interesting. Why? I wonder if the price goes down as healthcare transitions more to the private market. Interesting. Well, either way, we're not going to touch this anytime soon, but... 
I think it's an interesting idea, and it should work really well for eliminating the uh, last of these pesky socialists. Yeah. And small business grants and healthcare vouchers should more or less finish them off. Which is good, because uh, we're very soon going to have a purely liberal and capitalist country, which is what I wanted. And all we have to do is just make it more secular, and get rid of the religious who are still trying to murder me. Next turn, we're going to save up these points. And there goes the technology backwater. We also have high productivity, which is pretty nice. So really high productivity is going to be good for the GDP. Um, I still think we have the uncompetitive economy, though. So I'm kind of surprised that we have high productivity and we're uncompetitive at the same time. This doesn't say that it gets rid of that event, so I'm not too sure what's happened there. Well, I imagine it's going to go away very soon, then. Housing expansion. Do we relax the planning laws and allow some rural land to be built on? Now, we're going to keep the planning restrictions because I need to improve the environment for a while. We still have a surplus. Amazing. And we have 100% of the vote. Well, there you go. There you go. We have 100 freaking percent of the vote. I told you that people would love me. <laughs> what a turnaround. Only two years ago, I was down to, like, what? 16% of the vote? And now I have everyone in Zambia voting for me. It's almost, almost like I invested government funds in some sort of propaganda machine by controlling the press, which I did. So, yeah, that's paying off some dividends. 38 points. All right, we said we we're going to do uh, evolution only. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, the religious are going to be especially mad at me right off the bat. But religious membership over the next 30 turns will go down by 36%. I don't think I'm going to be able to eliminate the religious group in Zambia by the end of my second turn. But we're going to get darn close. So... Yeah, I mean, they're going to be less prevalent. I'm not worried about them at this point anymore. Liberalism membership also goes up. Technological advantage just becomes even more concrete than it was before. I mean, I think that's pretty good. Creationism versus evolution has historically been a topic that I have talked about. That's had some contention. It's still one of my most uh, disliked videos ever when I said that uh, I think evolution has some... Not fully fleshed out things, and I don't like the way that it's taught. I never even said, don't teach evolution. I never said that. It's amazing how you can say, I have some problems with evolutionary theory, and people say, Oh, you must think that we should just teach religion! Well, I didn't say that either. But whatever, it's still my like most disliked video ever, and that's fine, I guess. It's just interesting to me how people react. My position on this has not changed. I think evolution should be taught in schools. I think that it's the only scientific, really, theory available. Creationism isn't exactly scientific, so it shouldn't be taught in science class. And uh, I do have a couple problems with it as far as its extrapolation of data, but otherwise it's a pretty solid theory in a lot of ways, so I don't know. It's just the way that it's taught that bothers me. The scientific orthodoxy, so to speak. You know what I've never really talked about is creationism, which is not at all a scientific theory in my opinion. Because it, it, it deals... Okay, I don't want to ramble too much on this because I'm not in the mood, but the problem with creationism as far as a science class, God... If, if God exists, and I try to stay neutral on this as much as I can, but if God exists, and God created the universe, if that is correct, then God exists outside of science. God is the creator of it, but not bound by his creation, right? I guess that would be, that would be I think, the logical conclusion. You know, if God can create something out of nothing, well, he violated the laws of thermodynamics. I mean, yeah, you've got to have a God who's not bound by science, which means you can't exactly prove or disprove God using science only. At least that's my opinion on this one. To me, honestly, the existence of God has had less to do with a, uh, a scientific argument and more with a philosophical argument, which I can't really go into now because I would have to take a long, long time talking about it, but I don't know. I mean, there's obvious problems with trying to teach creationism in a science class for me. But at the same time, in my zealousness to try to teach what is, you know, factually true and what is scientific. I want to make sure that people understand not everything about evolution is fully understood yet. It's not wrong, it's just it's not fully understood, and maybe we never will know, and people need to be open-minded and not so butthurt anytime somebody says, well, I have a problem with evolution, or I don't necessarily believe in it as an origin of species. There's no reason to get so upset, guys. There really is not. That's really all I'm trying to say. Anyway, all right, we're going to apply that. Uh, eight points left to go. Um... Kind of nervous about the comment section now. I always do. Every time I talk about this kind of stuff, I always get nervous how people are going to respond. Because sometimes it's nice and sometimes it's really nasty. You never know. All right, we're going to do pollution controls. And the reason I'm doing pollution controls, even though I know it's going to hurt the GDP, is because it's actually an extremely cheap method of improving the environment. A shocking amount. Now, if you go to major fines, like, I'm not sure losing 5% of the GDP 
to improve the environment by 30% is a very good deal. I mean, it's okay, but reducing the GDP by 5% can be pretty nasty. It also upsets the capitalists a little bit. So I typically would prefer to set kind of something a little on the lower side when I'm going for a capitalist playthrough. Extensive monitoring, for example. Just keeping an eye on what people are putting up there so we can make predictions uh, based on of, of the environment based on people's CO2 emissions in their factories and so on. We're just monitoring it, but we're not, like, regulating the crap out of it. At least that's sort of how I'm interpreting this. The GDP will go down by about 1%. Okay, meh, not so bad. But we get 15% on the environment. So it was minus 5% for 30, right? Which means a 6% uh, environment increase per 1% of the GDP. By reducing it down to about 3 million kwacha, we're going to get almost 15% per 1%. Much, much better value, in my opinion. So this is what we're going to go for. Pretty easy across the board. And also, environmentalism is becoming very prevalent in this country, and uh, we really need to make them happy. So I think this will go a long way in order to make things a little bit better. In fact, why don't we go one step further, and we'll also pass some clean energy subsidies. Why not? That's, uh, this one's a little bit better. It still upsets the capitalists a little bit, but it doesn't hurt the GDP. Environmentalists like it, energy efficiency goes up, CO2 emissions goes down, and the environment goes up by another 25%. A little bit more expensive, but all in all, I think it's well worth the costs. All right, now that we are fully out of political capital, I guess I need to end this video. So, thank you guys for watching. This has been Provis. I do hope that you enjoyed. If so, then be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.